Um, I'm Lisa Wood. My uh, company is called Sprout New Media. I'm located in Stowe, Vermont. Um, this is my first WordCamp. I've wanted to come for a long time and just really excited to be here. Um, I applaud you all for making it to the bitter end and being here for the last session. Um, and I hope to make it um, entertaining for you. <laughs> um, quick show of hands. Um, designers in the room? Okay. Developers. Users? Sweet. Nice mix. Okay. Um, my objective today is really to give you some of the best practices for um, creating just a, a nice visual design. Very basic. We've done a lot of code stuff. Our, I know my head is hurting from all of the, the code and um, all of the technologies that we've been talking about this weekend. So this is going to be lighter. Um, I'm also going to preface this with, I don't usually work off of a PowerPoint. I'm usually much more free-flowing, so um, this is the way I would normally go through a session like this um, without the graphics set in place ahead of time, so um, take that for what it's worth. What's going to happen? Okay. So, design, really, is what we have in our minds, and we bring it out into a way that we can express it visually with the world, right? Pretty simple. Everything around us is design. That room upstairs on the 11th floor, wow, gorgeous design. Um, if you really take a look around you, this building in particular, every single thing in here has a very conscious design behind it. So what this is about is designing on the web. We're going to tell a story, always, with whatever we put out there. It's not always a story we want to tell. Right? So um, my goal here is to show you how not to have your site look like this. Um, <laughs> or this one. Not quite as bad, but, but still. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Not sure what they were thinking. This one actually has a slider, so it's, it's not that outdated. Um, but it's, it's interesting. And yes, this is the entire page. <laughs> huh. um, this one I just had to show you live because this is a hoop. Um, very interesting content. Crazy. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this was a class, maybe this is an ongoing thing. You've seen this book before, so you can talk about this. Um, but visually, it, it's really confusing. Um, wow. Not the way we want to design our sites. It's the main thing is uh, coming back. I don't know. They, I think they updated this last in fall 2008. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna move on. No, we're not. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna make sure help you make sure your designs so don't suck so that we're not hiding them. First things with any project, design development, what have you, any project, we need to ask the right questions, right? We need to find out who's the client, first of all, who's their customer, what's the purpose of the website? Is it informational, like a brochure? Is it an e-commerce site? Is it supposed to sell things? Is it supposed to give directions? What's it supposed to do? There's so many possibilities. So we have to be really clear before we get started. And then what do we need it to do? What kind of functionality does this website have to have? All of those things go into the design. What's the customer's pain? Is this um, a site for, um, for like an ADD client who can't deal with a lot of visuals and needs to be very simple and clear? Or is this for a store? where we need to have lots of um, products with clear information and a lot of different categories and things like that. What do we need to do? What's the customer's pain? What are they looking for? Is there existing branding that we need to work into our design? So the customer might have, and I see this a lot, they might have um, a logo that's, you know, 10 years old and could use some refreshing, but they, they've used it on everything. They really want to stay with it. So how can we use their existing branding and still make something that's attractive even if the logo isn't. And I'm going to start with color. Um, 
I'm a visual person. I love Pinterest. Um, it's great for inspiration. And colors make a huge difference in the look and feel of the website and the mood that it creates. So we've got the color wheel here. And raise your hand if you're familiar with the color wheel. Awesome. Um, if you're not, just take a look at this. We've got cool colors in our reds. We've got warm colors. Um, are pools. And then over here, we've got the way the color wheel is broken up. We've got primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow, and secondaries, which are shades of those that I'm not getting into right now. Complementary colors are on the opposite side of the wheel, and then you've got colors that are complementary that are next to each other on the wheel. Now, there's a lot of psychology that goes into choosing colors for your website. Um, blues tend to be kind of corporate business. Um, reds are obviously more fire, fiery driven sites. Um, green, a lot of times we'll use um, green for like a buy button because we want somebody to go instead of stop. So sometimes red for a buy button isn't a great choice. So there's some information there and there's a ton of information on the web on the psychology of color that you can, you can look up if you choose to. Taste the rainbow. It's not what we're about. Not for this. We want to keep it simple. We want to keep it simple. Um, best practice for your colors in any design, but particularly your website, um, one or two main colors that complement each other, and an accent color, which is also called um, a conversion color. So, for example, we've got two shades of one color, which is fine. You can use multiple shades. And then we've got a, a second color here and our accent color. And that usually means that we're going to use that color for when we want people to do something. So here's some examples of our two main colors. We need three different color schemes. Two, 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 two. And then the accent color. And so this is just a quick example. There's a million different combinations, obviously. Um, for this particular site, we might have the background be um, the yellow, or toned down version of that yellow, and then some blue, and then the accent color might be the buy buttons for the links. So that's what that conversion color is for. It's what do we want to use that for when we want people to do something next? Okay? Any questions so far? Feel free to raise your hand if you do. Um, for choosing color schemes, I often use a photo. I just, I really like to take a photo from nature, for example, because in nature all the colors go together. They just do. I don't know how, but they just do. So you take a photo and you might pick out some colors out of that, which is kind of cool. Um, this is a tool that's available online through Adobe. It's called Cooler. And you can actually use this to make a color scheme. Spend a lot of time playing around this color the slider. So here's the green, and it tells you some complementary colors. The blue, maybe that purple is an accent. So there's a, a neat tool for you. And I'll have the slides up on Slide Deck um, after the session. Another tool is Color Lovers. This site is kind of cool because it's all user generated color palettes and patterns even. You can get patterns from here too. So if you're on the if you go to browse and you can go to palettes and you can actually see some color schemes that people have submitted. And granted they're using more than the cup just the basic two colors, but um, you can really get some good inspiration and if you like some of these, you can actually use them. And there's patterns as well. You can also make your own color schemes on the site. So this, this is something to be, those aren't the coolest patterns, but you see what I mean. <coughs> okay, question on color. Yes? I've actually, um, a cooler is a great tip that looks really cool. Um, I found a really helpful trick um, it's called Instant Eyedropper, and I found that it's like a little, have you, you've heard of this, I see that look on your face. You can literally pick out a color from a, a picture. Because I had, I had a client 
who was like, um, I have this pen and I really love the color of my <laughs> pen. How do I get that color? I'm like, well, send me a picture of it. And you can literally get the HTML code for any pixel in a, in a photo. And I found that really, really helpful. You can. It's, um, it's very cool. When we go back to the web, I'll give you an example of that. Um, one thing with the pictures, I, I use a similar tool. I don't know if it's the same tool or not, but um, I'll often post color schemes out of a photo on my website. So if you're ever looking for some inspiration for color, go to rockmedia.com. You'll see it every now and then. Um, OK, typography. Exactly, this, this is just a definition off of Wikipedia. The art and technique of arranging type in order to make language visible. Pretty simple, right? Well, when you get into it, it's not quite so simple because we have so many choices. We have our serif that has the little, the little feet, um, the sans serif. We've got wide fonts, light fonts, narrow, display fonts. We've got I mean, crazy, now we have wingding fonts and um, fonts that have all capitals, tons and tons of handwritten fonts. Um, and when you're choosing fonts, there's some guidelines. And again, I'm definitely in the camp of keeping it simple. Clear and easy to read. Some fonts are easier to read than others. There's just no doubt about it, especially 